Last time I did a video like this comparing Freewell and Polar Pro filters, it was a pretty close comparison. This time, things are very different. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Edition 2 Mist Variable ND filters versus the Freewell Mist Variable ND filters. This is an incredibly unique set of tools, the Polar Pro version being the first filters that I've ever heard of that combine both a diffusion filter and a variable ND. Freewell wasn't very far behind making their own version after a ton of popular demand asking them to attempt a more affordable alternative. So the question is, did Freewell succeed in making something that stands up to the Polar Pro at that reduced price? And the answer is, it's complicated, so I'm just gonna show you and let you decide. And if you do want to hop around the video at all to different sections, there are timestamps down below and there are product links in the description too if you wanna go check them out or pick one up. Before we dive into all the different tests and examples that I have for you, including both somewhat controlled studio tests as well as some more practical examples, let's talk about what these filters are exactly. Like I mentioned, these are combining two different types of filters, a variable neutral density filter or variable ND, which allows you to control the exposure of your shot and a diffusion filter which adds softness to the image called halation, particularly around the highlight areas which can soften some of the digital sharpness and even give your images a kind of hazy or dreamy look. Both of these brands have chosen to call their diffusion mist, which I appreciate because it's much easier to say. If you want a more in-depth look at what a variable ND does, there's a link down in the description to another video that I made all about it. So when we're looking at the test for these filters, we're gonna have to focus on both aspects. How does it perform as a variable ND filter and how does it perform as a mist filter. Plus, both brands come in two to five stop and six to nine stop variants, so we'll also be comparing how each strength performs. Okay, is everyone on the same page? Secure the cup and let's do this. Kicking things off with the price comparison because that's going to be a big part of this. The Freewell filters are $109 each or $219 if you get the pair of them. The Polar Pro filters on the other hand come in at $249 each or $449 for the pair so they're quite a bit more expensive. You'll have to decide whether they're worth it. The Freewell filters are available in 58, 62, 67, 72, 77 or 82 millimeter thread sizes and the Polar Pro come in 67, 77 or 82. So you've got a few more options on the Freewell size if you don't like to use step-up rings. The Freewell filters have a small aluminum carrying case and their wonderful magnetic lens caps, which I love so much because who doesn't love magnets? Now, I have two main problems with these cases. One, there is no marking on the outside to indicate which filter is inside the case. Every time I want to grab one of these filters, I have to check through both of them to get the one that I want. It's kind of like plugging in a USB stick. The other issue that I have is that the filter does not fit inside the case with the lens cap on. So the fact that they can't just always stay with the filter if I want to use the case, that's a bit of a disappointment. However, this same area is actually where I give huge points to Polar Pro. The case and the lens cap are all one extremely well thought out unit. You unscrew the back from the filter, tuck it neatly onto the front so that it doesn't get lost, and then screw your filter on and remove the lens cap, which again also has the back part attached to it. They call this the Defender 360, and not only is it a great case, it really makes putting on and taking off the filter easy with very little chance of accidentally touching the filter itself and getting fingerprints on it. And to top it all off, the cases are clearly marked which filter you have in your hands so you know before you open them. I know the case obviously isn't the main event here, but having used both of these for a while now, I can honestly say that the added functionality of the Polar Pro made a big difference in my user experience. Both of these filters have metal construction and are definitely made to take a beating. Both brands are nearly identical as far as thickness and manage to get away with super minimal vignetting at 16 millimeters. Both filters also have hard stops at the end of their range to try and avoid that cross polarization X pattern that you get with variable ND sometimes. And when I did my test, they performed reasonably well. At 16 millimeters, the Freewell two to five stop started to have some polarization creep in from the edges at that five stop mark, a little worse than the Polar Pro did. This effect is less noticeable at 24 millimeters and it's basically unnoticeable at 35 millimeters, unless you're really looking for it. On the six to nine stop filters, the results were very similar as we moved through the range of stops. At 16 millimeters, six stops was pretty clean on the Polar Pro, but the Freewell had a slight darkened edge effect going on. And as we push up 
to nine stops, the cross polarization creeps in more and more. Again, from what I can see, the Polar Pro performs a bit better all the way through the range, but they both definitely have some of that polarization going on. When we push to 24 millimeters and then 35 millimeters, the effects get less and less noticeable again. So overall, I'd say that the Polar Pro held up a little bit better with the effects of cross polarization, which is especially noticeable at the wider focal lengths. One thing that both brands included are little notches or haptic feedback at each stop. This has pros and cons. If you wanted to do a smooth exposure change throughout the range of the filter, that's not gonna happen. However, it can be handy for doing quick exposure calculations and it's a bit more secure since you can't really accidentally move the filter from the notch. When comparing the functionality of the two, I have to say the Polar Pro is much smoother between stops and the stops have just enough of a notch so you feel them without being hard to push past. The Freewell has a bit more of a metal on metal feel to it and I pretty regularly get stuck in one of those notches and have to work with it a bunch to get it unstuck. So again, this is a functionality point for Polar Pro. Going back to the test for the different stops, I also wanted to see how accurate the different stop markings were. The Freewell 2 to 5 stop filter ranged from 2 and a third stop at the 2 stop marker to 5 and 2 thirds stop at the 5 stop marker, whereas the Polar Pro markers were measured out dead on to what the markers said. The Freewell 6 to 9 stop ranged from 5 and 2 thirds to 8 and 2 thirds stops, and the Polar Pro was dead on for the 6 and 7 stop markers and a third of a stop short the rest of the way landing on 8 and 2 thirds stops as well. Now, I'm not saying that that my test is perfect by any means, but the Polar Pro was a bit more accurate here. Another big question regarding ND filters is the color cast. You may have noticed already in some of the test shots that both brands do have a bit of color added to them. I white balanced using the control shot with no filter, and then I added the Freewell, and there was a greenish yellow cast to it, both on the two to five and six to nine stop filters. I found that the Polar Pro had a bit of a blue cast, which almost looked like it could be caused by a little bit of cross polarization that's creeping in. I personally thought that the Polar Pro looked a little bit closer to neutral, but it's really tough to tell with any certainty. In practical use, you would want to white balance once you already have the filter applied, and then you probably wouldn't have any of these problems at all. I was really impressed with how they both performed in retaining sharpness. It's a telltale sign of cheap filters when they ruin the sharpness of an image, but both these filters were great to my eye. But pretty much everything that we've talked about up until now has just been about variable ND filters. What about the mist part? Well, this is where these two filters actually start to get really different and where it starts to get more into that personal preference. I did a high contrast test with some bright lights in the background so that we could see the difference in levels of diffusion, and this is very interesting. The Freewells offer much more intense diffusion than the Polar Pro counterparts. One thing that I wasn't a fan of was the fact that the diffusion on the Freewell 6 to 9 VND was way more intense than that of the 2 to 5 filter. This inconsistency makes it really difficult to use these two filters together on a shoot, even though they're a matching set. The Polar Pro filters had a much more subtle diffusion, and it seemed to be much more consistent between the two different levels of neutral density. You can use these together on a shoot without any trouble. Another thing that I like a lot is that the Polar Pro mist effect manages not to totally throw off the contrast of the shot. This could be partly due to how subtle the diffusion effect is, but it's also partially because Polar Pro uses a different type of diffusion particle than other diffusion filters commonly use. The goal being to give the halation effect while maintaining the contrast of the shot, and I think they've done that wonderfully. This obviously comes down to personal preference and what you need specifically for the shot that you're trying to get, but for my purposes, I find that I grab the Polar Pro more often because of the way that they've done their mist. I also wanted to do a bit more of a practical bright daylight test as well, since that's where VNDs really come in handy. I used a backlit shot so that we could really start to see the effects of the misting and how they might come out if you were shooting into the sun. All of these shots were taken in S-Log3 and corrected in the same way to start with so that we can see the differences. Looking at the control shot with no filter, things are nice and clean and sharp. The two to five Freewell filter has a decent amount of that haze effect and the contrast of the shot is definitely reduced. Again, we have that greenish yellow kind of cast, but that could be easily corrected with a white balance shift. The 2 to 5 Polar Pro has a very subtle dreamy softening effect, but maintains the contrast much more than the Freewell. It also has a slight cool tint that we can fix in the same way that we did with the Freewell. The 6 to 9 stop Freewell is super hazy and has that same greenish yellow tint, and the 6 to 9 stop Polar Pro matches the mist amount from its partner almost perfectly, and it might even have a little bit less of that cool effect. 
Comparing again now that we've adjusted the white balance for all of them, including the control shot with no filter, we can see the effects of the diffusion more clearly without so much of that color shift. And it really emphasizes the intensity of the Freewell filter's diffusion. So then which one is better? Like I said, it's kind of complicated because the diffusion on each of these filters is so different that it becomes at least partially an artistic choice. That said, in my experience, the functionality of the Polar Pro is superior and that makes using them a nicer experience. The Defender 360 case is a big win for sure, even though I do love magnets and the Freewell magnetic lens caps. The image quality tests also seem to favor Polar Pro for accuracy and less of those common variable neutral density artifacts. And of course, that's not to say that the Freewells were bad by any means. We have to remember that you can get a pair of the Freewells for less money than buying one of the Polar Pro filters. So if budget is a factor, that's gonna play a big part in the end, I would personally rather save up to take the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon filters, but leave a comment down below and let me know how you would choose. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Secure the cup. It's a little cold, but. Can I just do this all day? You guys wanna just watch me drink coffee. Weird slurpy noises.